What's up guys, we're back. My name is Matthew Kaufman. Thanks again for clicking on this video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I try to post on this channel once at least, if not maybe two or three times per week. Today what I want to talk about is kind of a topic that people maybe get intimidated by, or maybe not intimidated, but it's just kind of like a controversial thing because nobody agrees upon it ever. And what that topic is, is going to be buying versus renting property. In the end, there's never going to be a universal yes or no to this question. Once again, nobody's ever going to agree upon it. In this video, what I'm going to talk about is going to be the positive and negatives to renting and the positive and negatives to buying. First is going to be the advantages to renting. First and probably the most common one is going to be the cost. It's possibly going to be cheaper to rent than buy a property. Paying, say, $1,200 each month with no, you know, long, long-term commitment. Yeah, you're gonna be maybe any one-year one -year lease, but it's a lot more understandable than a 30-year mortgage for $300,000. If you do break it down, yeah, you're gonna be paying, let's say, example, $1,000 a month for that property if you do buy it. But once again, 30 years compared to one month or one year of rent is a lot easier to kind of taste. The next advantage to renting is going to be there's going to be fewer maintenance costs. When you're renting, you have a landlord or you have a fix it guy who's going to literally just show up probably within a day. Say you're having problems with your, with your toilet. You call them up, you text them, you email them, whatever. They're going to show up and they're going to fix the issue. And it's not going to be a charge to you. It's going to be a charge to the owner of the property. The great thing about renting is that there's no down payment. There's going to be potentially a deposit, but in comparison to a down payment, which is on average, probably going to be about 20% of the total cost of the home compared to the deposit if you're renting, which generally is sometimes one, maybe two months. So if you compare, say, two to $3,000 versus $50,000 in one shot, that's a lot easier to like figure out and kind of understand financially, especially. The great thing about renting is there's never going to be a real estate tax. You potentially might need renter's insurance, but it's a lot cheaper in comparison. I literally just yesterday went down to the town hall and paid the property tax for the property here. And overall, it ended up costing a little over $4,000 versus a, say, renter's insurance, which is probably going to cost you $500 to $1,000 at most for the entire year. I think another big one for another advantage for renting is going to be it's a lot, it's a lot less stressful because what's the common saying? Who cares? It's not mine, right? The positive to that situation for the renter is going to be they're going to be out of it within a month to a year. And at that point, it's not your headache. So you're probably not going to care about, you know, scuffing up the floors or kind of messing up the walls a little bit here and there, you know, staying the carpet potentially. Well, yeah, you, you might have to end up paying a little bit through your deposit. So the actual owner can actually pay for those things. You might lose a little money, but in the end, this, the stress is just so much less. <laughs> I think a great one for younger people or single people or just people that like to travel around and move around a lot is going to be that freedom to move or downsize whenever necessary. If you're someone that kind of hops around, you know, you say, say you live on the East Coast, a month from now you might want to live, live on the West Coast. By renting, you have that ability possibly. Once again, it might be a month to a year before you can actually do it, but it's going to be a lot easier than if you own a property. Reason being, if you're renting out of the space, no issues, once again, who cares, it's not yours, it's done with. Compared to owning, if you decide to move and say you want to sell the property, that's a long, drawn out process. Anywhere from more than likely at least 30 days, if not practically 100 days. Because obviously what you have to do is find a real estate agent, get it posted, try to decide on the cost as to what obviously you want to sell it for, along with having a lawyer. And once again, all these things are going to cost money when you actually decide if you're going to sell it. Once it's listed, you're going to have people looking at it. They're going to put offers in and probably you're probably not going to get the amount that you specifically want to get unless you're in a very like high demand area like Los Angeles or something. Then you're going to settle on an offer and that person is going to put it on contract. And then eventually the person is going to have the inspector come in. They're going to figure things out. More than likely, they're going to find something wrong. They're going to bring the price down even more. Then eventually you might settle on an actual offer, final offer number. Then it's going to be put potentially in escrow or simply the closing, which generally is 
on, on average, probably, at least for me, it was 30 days. So to conclude that entire idea, you have freedom to move if you wanted to by renting. Great thing about renting is there's no risk for home depreciation because once again, you don't own it at all. That potential for depreciation is going to be on the owner of the property. So it's not your headache. Another positive of renting is utilities. Sometimes utilities are built into, you know, the contract or the lease that you have for the apartment or building or whatever it is. So me being an owner, I, myself, I pay the water bill and the sewer bill. My tenants pay their gas and electric. If they were living on their own, if they own their own house, they'd be paying all of it. So I would not be paying obviously the water and sewer. Next up, which is kind of a fun one, is gonna be free amenities. And that could include a pool, a gym, it could have on premise security maybe. One great thing about renting is the money that you would potentially be spending on buying, you're saving, which means maybe you could use it for another investment, whether whatever that may be, could be a business, a trip, whatever it may be. And another great one, which a lot of people probably appreciate is that if you're renting, you can't be foreclosed upon. You could be evicted, which is a whole different story, but the bank cannot come knock knocking at your door saying, hey, you haven't been paying, get out, it's ours now. Like I said, you could be evicted, which is a whole different ballgame when it comes to your landlord and you, and that's up to you, but more importantly, the court to decide whether or not you should be living there. Next big topic is gonna to be the disadvantages of renting. Renting versus buying, potentially the rental payment that you're paying, it might actually exceed the monthly cost of what could be a mortgage on a house. By renting, you're not really giving yourself an opportunity to own, so there's no ownership or creation of wealth. You're simply just putting money towards something and never actually getting any residual return on it. The thing about renting is payments will never stop, which means you're never gonna stop paying a landlord to live where you're living compared to if you own the property eventually after you know whether it's a 10 10 year uh, mortgage a 20 year or a 30 year whatever maybe after that point you're, you're done paying yeah you're still going to be property taxes and insurance but it's going to be severely less compared to if you're strictly just paying the full the bad thing about renting is that rent will rise over time simply because inflation because the owner of the property the taxes on the property might have gone up or he had some like unknown cost and that's one good thing about being a landlord is you can decide whatever you want the actual cost for rent to be living yeah it's up to somebody else to decide hey i'm willing to pay that to live there but once again it's your decision the bad thing about renting is you're not always going to have a good landlord they might be kind of scummy they might be kind of skeezy they might be trying to take your money. They're not willing to make repairs to the property when realistically there should be. On the other hand, you might be dealing with a management company, which some, some, sometimes can actually be even worse because it's just a large corporation which are kind of holding and running all these different properties. So they really don't care about you as a specific person. They care about the property as a whole. And that could be your unit, which might be one for everything, or it could be a hundred unit apartment complex. Another bad thing about renting is there's no tax benefits at all, at all. <laughs> If you're owning, there's a whole bunch of tax benefits. That may be a topic I might cover in a later video, so I'm not gonna go super into it, but just know when you're renting, you're not gonna get any positive tax uh, returns at, at all. When you're renting, there's always gonna be rules, regulations, limitations on what you can do as a tenant. If you're someone that smokes, often enough when you're renting from somebody, they don't want people smoking in their building so because it smells everything up. And there, there might be someone after you live there who wants to live there and then they come in and say, oh, it smells like crap. I'm not living there. That's just one basic example. You might be someone that likes to party a lot. Well, when you live in maybe an apartment complex where there's a bunch of different people living right around you, you're always gonna get noise complaints if that's the case. You can't stay up till three o'clock in the morning blasting your music because other people might be trying to sleep or maybe they have kids. Another negative about renting is it's temporary. There's, it's kind of, there's kind of less stability with it. One example of that might be you're living in one place, you're renting for one year, after that, you might have to, go, have to go somewhere else to live, maybe because the, the rent went up or maybe because your spouse got a job somewhere else. Now it's time to leave versus if you're owning, you, you could own one house your entire life and never have to leave. That's a, that's entirely up to you, of course. That's your decision. And probably the last one, and honestly, one of the like most important ones, that's gonna be you're always at the mercy of the property owner. Once again, the property owner could decide to increase the rents. They could decide to evict you for whatever reason. Of course, it's gonna be the court to really make the final decision on that but the last thing you want to deal with is an eviction. So we've now talked about all the advantages and disadvantages of renting. Next up, what I want to do is talk about the advantages and disadvantages of owning. In my opinion, one of the greatest reasons to own, one of the biggest advantages is going to be that you're building home equity and wealth over time. For me, I bought my property and I put a 20% deposit down on the property. So now that amount is equity 
until I eventually get it back through paying the mortgage off month to month. For me, I have a 20 year mortgage on this property. So in 20 years, I'm gonna own this home outright. And at that point, it's my decision whether I wanna continue renting it to other people, if I wanna sell it. I mean, hell, I might sell it in the next five years. I don't know, it's really dependent upon what happens and where I'm kinda of at at that point in my life. A great thing about owning is all the tax advantages and tax deductions that you can use when you own the property. And kind of like a subcategory is that of that is gonna be whether you're owning a property just as your residence or for me in this situation, owning a property and using it as an investment rental property. So I have tenants paying for the mortgage and all the costs and everything as time goes on. There's even more deductions for an owner who rents it out to other people. The big reason for that, the reason the government does that is because the government can only have so much housing. They can only pay for so much. They only care so much to, to house people. So they depend on independent people to own property and rent it to others. And for that, they're very appreciative. So they give you all these advantages and deductions that you can get for doing that. Great thing about owning is also, it's your space, which means you decide on the rules. Of course, stay within the legal boundaries for rules, but <laughs> that means you can have a pet if you wanted to. That means you could smoke cigarettes if you wanted to. That means you might want to have a pool in your backyard. Of course, you're gonna have to run that by the town before you start building, but you could potentially do that. And talking about that, you have the now, because you own, you have the ability to remodel and expand and potentially tear down walls and build other things and put, you know, a shed in your backyard or like I said, a pool. Some people think of owning a house as it's like a pride thing. There's like pride of ownership, which means it's like a social status or an accomplishment. And that's great. And if that's why you're doing it, cool. But for other people, it might be just a family thing. It might be potentially better for you if you have children or, you know, a family structure for yourself and you feel like owning a home just might be a better situation and a better circumstance for your family. A great thing about having a mortgage is, is that you can improve your credit score by having that. So for me, what I'm doing is I own the property. Every month I pay the mortgage. And over time, say I decide I wanna buy a car or another house or just something where I need to go to the bank and feel I need to get a loan or maybe I wanna start a business, whatever it is. So I need to go to the bank to get a loan. They're gonna look at my credit history and say, oh, he's owned a property. He's always paid on time. Now we're more than willing to potentially give more money for that because he's trustworthy. And that's why people get loans is because they're trustworthy. <laughs> the bank's not gonna give you money if you're someone that's just a high liability for them. Great thing about owning a property is that once you get to the end of your mortgage, at that point, you own the house. There's no more monthly payments. And of course you're gonna pay your you know, taxes and maybe your insurance. Great thing about owning a home also is when it comes time to decide, decide on your mortgage, you can decide between a fixed rate mortgage or a variable. I personally don't understand why someone would do a variable, but fixed, which means you have a specific interest rate that you're paying for your mortgage, which means the cost of it's never gonna go up, it's never gonna go down, unless you decide to refinance, then obviously that might change according for that reason. And also the thing about owning your own property is that you don't have a landlord. So it's entirely up to you what you wanna do with it, like I mentioned before. Great thing about owning is you could possibly rent out to other people. You might own a home that's simply just your residence, and down the road, you might say, hey, I wanna move, but I still wanna keep the property. At that time, you might be able to decide, hey, I'm just gonna now rent it to somebody else. Great thing about owning too is you can eventually sell it and you can actually use that, those proceeds, the profit that you make off of it, to buy maybe a bigger and better home or some other, hopefully, asset, not liability, like a car or something. And last one, which actually is kind of like close to me because it's, I actually wrote my one of my college essays on this, and that was, it's the American dream to own a home. The American dream pretty much is the goal of your generation doing better than the previous generation. And if for you owning a home is that thing, that's the American dream. Last part what we're gonna talk about is going to be the disadvantages of owning a home. First one is that the price of the home, it could potentially lose value. There's no guarantee that's gonna go up in value. You might have bought in a specific area and all of a sudden for whatever reason, prices go down and you have no control over that. Another one talking about the cost, when you buy the house, you might overpay. Once again, supply and demand, if there's only so much supply and there's a severe amount of demand, you're definitely gonna pay more than what you normally would. The next one, which is actually kind of funny because I was talking about this with somebody uh, today, and that's obtaining a mortgage and buying a home is such a nightmare. <laughs> it's such a hassle. Just all the hoops you have to jump through. It's almost like they don't want you to actually buy the home because there's so many things that you have to like get through to get to that goal. A disadvantage of owning a home is, or potentially owning a home is that not everyone's gonna qualify for a mortgage, which means you might not be able to buy property. And aside from not qualifying for the mortgage, more specifically, it's gonna probably be because you either don't have enough money or your credit isn't good enough. And actually made a previous video, so once you're done with this, you can obviously feel free to go watch that. And what I talked about there was how to improve your credit over time. 
When owning a property, you need to pay taxes. You need to pay taxes and you need to pay your homeowner's insurance. These are gonna be constant costs. If you own a property, you're always gonna pay them regardless if you're paying for a mortgage or not. And that might be part of a reason why someone might just wanna rent for the rest of their lives. And that's fine too. A big negative to owning a home is the down payment is, it's a lot of money, <laughs> which means you gotta save for a while potentially. Like I said before, I paid 20% on the property for the total cost of the house. And that was a lot of money. That was the majority of my life savings. But for me, I knew it was something I really wanted to do and I knew it was gonna be beneficial over time for me. Tough thing about owning a home is that the maintenance costs can be pretty expensive. Just two weeks ago, one of the um, heating systems for one of my tenant's apartments went out completely. And the worst thing about it was that it was on like the coldest night of the year. And the thing went out, the HVAC guy came, did what he had to do. I haven't got the bill yet, but I know for a fact it's gonna be at least eight, nine hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars, hopefully no more than that, but I guess we'll see soon when I get the bill. If you're someone that lives in a housing community, there might be an HOA, which means you're pretty much paying this organization who's paying to do the lawn, paying to, you know, to do the snow if necessary, if there's a pool to take care of that, take care of the outside of the properties. And that's gonna be, a, generally I think it's either a monthly or a yearly fee. Another disadvantage is a home is a pretty long-term commitment. And obviously you can decide at some point if you wanna sell, but once again, that's a big process. Tough thing about owning a home is while it is an asset, it's an increased liability. And just the responsibility alone is just massive. It's a stressful thing for sure. Another one about when you buy a property or sell a property for that matter, there's always gonna be transactional fees. So the money that's gonna to go to the real estate agent, the lawyer, the mortgage broker, generally it's, I think I wanna say it's anywhere between like three and 6% is the percentage of the total cost of the home that's going to those people and it's up to them, obviously, they divvy it up accordingly. The bad thing about owning a home is that taxes are always gonna go up. <laughs> Pretty rarely they, are they gonna go down. One scary thing for a lot of people is that there's potential that your home is gonna get damaged or destroyed. Your home could be in a flood zone. You could get a flood, house is gone, destroyed, washed away, whatever. You could have a fire, the entire thing, place burns to the ground. Yeah, that's why you have insurance, but it's a terrifying thing. And the last one, which is gonna relate to your mortgage, relate to your bank, is that foreclosure is a re pretty realistic thing for a lot of people, unfortunately. You might be down in your luck, you might lose your job, something terrible might happen in your life. <clears throat> All of a sudden, you can't pay for your bills. One of those bills being your mortgage. If so much time goes by and you're not paying your mortgage, all of a sudden, knock, 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 the bank's here, we're taking the house back because you're not actually paying for it. The bank doesn't care, they're just gonna kick you out on the street at the drop of a hat, you know? And it's messed up to think about, but it's true. So overall, there's really just countless reasons that are both good and bad when it comes to either buying or renting. And there's really no single answer to satisfy everybody at the same time. Everybody's gonna have their opinion. Some people despise the idea of investing in real estate and other people are gonna think that renting is just throwing your money in the garbage. But like I said, your opinion is likely not gonna be the same as somebody else's opinion. You might as well be talking politics, honestly, because nobody's gonna agree on anything. Overall guys, I think for me, buying a investment rental property was honestly one of the best things I could have done with my money. In the end, I think it's just situational, kind of where you're at in your life, whether you have a bunch of money saved up and you feel like you need to do something with it, or maybe you enjoy, you know, renting. Great thing about that is you're saving a lot of money. You're saving money instead of paying it on taxes, paying it on insurance, paying it on just random maintenance that you would have to do on a property if you did own it. I just want to say thanks for watching this video, guys. Feel free to subscribe, give it a like, and once again, we'll talk soon. My name is Matthew Kaufman. Take care.